3D pans are a really easy way to bake a show-stopping cake, but since you probably don't bake using a 3D pan that often, let's do a quick review. First of all, you should always read the instructions for the specific 3D pan you're using before you start baking, because each 3D pan is a little bit of a different size, so it requires a different amount of cake batter, a different baking time, a different cooling time. You get the point. Set yourself up for success by reviewing your instructions before you actually start, and you can download PDFs of all of our 3D pan instructions at Wilton.com. Now you're definitely going to want to use a firm textured cake batter. I suggest pound cake, and here's why. Pound cake is thicker and denser, so your finished cake will be more sturdy. Definitely use a pound cake, whether that's a scratch recipe, a boxed pound cake mix, or you can modify a standard cake mix into a denser pound cake recipe, and I'll post the instructions on how to do that below. To prepare your pans for baking, you have a few different options. You can brush the inside of the pan with cake release, you can brush the insides of the pan well with solid vegetable shortening and then sprinkle with flour, or you can spray generously with Bake Easy or another pan spray. But keep in mind, no matter which method you do, you have to get every single inch covered well, including the nooks and crannies, so that your cake will come out cleanly. Now, if the pan that you're using calls for kitchen twine, you're looking for this stuff. It's oven safe, and it's really important to use if your pan calls for it. You'll use it to tie two pans together so that the pans don't displace while baking. If you don't use it, your pan, the cake might bake up and actually force the top off, which would create a misshapen cake. So don't skip the twine. If your instructions call for a cookie sheet, place the pan onto a cookie sheet before sliding it in the oven to keep the pan stable during baking. To check for doneness, some pans have a hole punched in them, as you can see here on my lamb pan. I suggest using a cake tester with a 3D pan because it's longer, but you can use a toothpick. The long, the long cake tester is good because it will get all the way into the center of a baked cake, the part that takes the longest to bake through to make sure it's completely done. Now for cooling. Cooling is the next most important thing next to using a pound cake in terms of making sure that your cake is strong, sturdy, and stands up. Follow the cooling instructions for your pan and don't hurry the cooling time. This allows the cake to set up before you decorate it so that it's strong and sturdy and stays put where it's supposed to be. Again, follow the instructions. And if needed, after your cake is completely cooled, you can trim the bottom of the cake with a serrated knife so that it will sit level on your cake board. For more inspiration and instructions for all of our 3D pans, visit Wilton.com.